Okay. So the two biggest mistakes I've seen when we're, we're working on scalps is one is these angles are too high. Why is that a problem? Well, first of all, it's not natural. Second of all, it looks unnatural because you can see the graft's insertion. And if you are somewhat not good as a surgeon, or your cystins are not good in placement and they place the grafts too deep or compressed, you'll see the grafts because they won't look good. So you need to lower them so that one, it will represent nature. Two, is the fact that they, any small errors you make will be slightly camouflaged. And three, it'll create better visual density. And the reason for visual density is that they'll, they'll lay down and shingle like a, like a shadow. Can you see I'm creating a shadow on the scalp? So these are important points, and don't worry, they're going to be reiterated a thousand points, like you're, a thousand times, and you're going to do this over and over again in the lab. But it's nice to see it on a live human being how these angle low and they don't splay. So that's really referring to the frontal hairline and the central mid scalp portion. If we go now to the crown, the, the, the crown is going to be, he's got a very interesting crown because if you see uh, over here, this is the whirl point that starts across up here. Then he's got this another component up here going down like this. So it's almost a, it's a very complicated I'm a it's very interesting, right? You can see yeah. two worlds that are sitting over here. One going up like this, and then one coming down like this. This is very unusual. Usually it's a single world in most cases. And this one, and the worlds usually, if they're two worlds, they usually sit like this, but this is sort of off like this. So look at, the best su suggestion is, if this is all confusing you, go start looking at people's scalps and look at a lot of scalps and you'll begin to understand how hair grows differently. And so you can see how these go like this, angled up and around and down. This comes down and comes this way. So this is a crown. Uh, the other thing uh, as far as how nature goes is that there are no abrupt transitions. And I'm going to illustrate that more. At, let me talk about one more zone and then uh, and Vance can interject any time if anything is in, in the crown, I, I, you got to think of the hair as having flow. It, think, of a, think of watching a, a flowing stream and there's a rock sitting there. The water curves around the rock, and there's eddies and there's flow. If you if you think if you have that concept in your mind, and you look at the crown and the world, and see how the hair flows and radiates out from that, you'll you'll see the hair has flow, and it's very very. I think it's easier to learn to do a, a competent hairline creation than it is to do the vertex, because the to, to recreate this transition of angles and create the flow of that hair is much more difficult than the hairline. It can be done, you can learn it, but it's, it's much more difficult. But if you, if you pay attention to the hair that's there and, and learn to mimic that, then you can do it. And during, during the, the lab, you'll get a, we'll get a sense of showing you, you know, it's very, it's really cool. A lab is so critical for a course because I'll watch you in five minutes, I'll see a mistake, I'll come back and you've corrected that mistake, and it, it's really quite enjoyable. So the last component of the, of the scalp here is this lateral portion. Do you see how there's a division line right here? Where is this division line? The division line, and you'll hear this more from Tony in his talk, is right at the lateral canthus. So in other words, if I took my finger, the lateral canthus going up like this, drawing straight up here. This is that transition point from horizontal, that box that I told you about, into vertical plane. So when you look at vertical plane, so when you see someone that's really balding, that has like a Norwood 7, the most advanced baldness, he will have just a little rim here. He's, his lateral hump has fallen down like this. So to rebuild it, you're not just drawing a central scalp. The biggest mistake I've seen people do is they, they don't understand the lateral hump. So people are drawing hairlines all the way out to here. The hairline stops at the lateral canthus. So everything on the vertical scalp right here, Okay, this is the vertical side scalp, has a different angle and direction. So what are these? So take a look here. Do you see how they cascade gradually down? Can you see that? It goes like this. Now this is almost vertical. This is vertical down this way. So it goes horizontal and it's falling and it's falling and it's falling and it's falling. So that's a lateral hump, okay? Now a subcomponent of the lateral hump. Let me just yeah, do go this ahead. so you can, you can see this hair fall. Yes. Sorry, I'm not okay. view. And again, the hair has flow. The hair on the top is growing anterior. The hair on the side above the ear is growing inferior. And in him, it's angled posteriorly as well. Yes, yes. So there's this enormous change in, in, angle, in angle from up here where it's growing anterior. And then there's this gradual transition to growing inferior and posterior. 
And you're going to talk about the temple piece Yes, now? yes. So, so the last component, I, the, the temporal hair, lateral hump is all sort of one component. So lateral hump refers to this component. The temporal hair is all of this, but this is that the temporal point or temp, when I talk about temporal hair or temporal point, I usually refer more to this zone, this frontal zone. So it, it is temporal based hair. It's parietal temporal based hair. But when we talk about temporal, we usually talk about this component here. So this is really good because Scott's got this incredible mm -hmm. temporal point that's coming down. Down here, and these a couple things I want you to remark. Number one is that the, the it's very flush to the scalp, very flat. It doesn't stick up like this. Even how low these angles here, they still angle like this. These are almost flush, flat to the scalp. That's why these are the the technically most difficult area to transplant. And you'll hear what Vance has suggested, you know, don't tr transplant the crown. This is 10 times harder than the crown. Oh yeah. This is an area, maybe 100 times harder. This is an area where you're going to make a patient look insane. That's almost unforgivably impossible to fix if you start. So we always suggest, you know, at least multiple years in practice before you start rebuilding temples. So this course, you're not going to hear a lot about temple design because I, we, it's an advanced topic. But it's important to understand what's going on in this area. So a few things as, as Vance has pointed out here is that these angles go back. So if you make these angles down, think about where the hair is going to grow. It's going to grow into his eyebrow, right? So these, when you get up as far as this, they have to go back, then down. Now hold on, wait a second, look at this. These go down, right? So if you look, look at these hairs here. Do they go back? No, they go down, right? They go down like this, and look at the angles, okay? Do you see this? Down, back, here. Now on all the way up here, they don't even go down at all. They go straight back and then they go down. So understand how the temple flows. If you are just going to recreate a temple based on a simple, okay, they all go down, they don't. And what is what are the consequences? If you make these angles too high this way, it's gonna start sticking up and looking insane. If you make them going down this direction, they're gonna grow into the face. If you make them all going back, it's not gonna look natural because it doesn't go on back, it goes down and back this way. So does that make sense? So that's very, very important to understand that. And, and the other issue in the Temple Peak is that there is no hiding it. It's completely yeah. exposed like the eyebrow. If you make hair angulation or elevation errors in the Temple Peak, the patient can't hide it with hairstyling. If, you're, if you make some mistakes in the frontal hairline, that can be hidden with hairstyling. You can't hide the Temple Peak with, hair, with hairstyling. The patient's got to have that hair removed or they've got to keep it shaved down. So it is aesthetically unforgiving, unforgiving. And it's not only very hard to create very, very low angles as a surgeon, but your staff that place into it, it's really hard for them to place well. And if they traumatize the graft during insertion, the grafts either don't grow, they grow out kinky, they grow at a different angle, the curl is misangled. So it's not, it's, this is just a nightmare. So the way that I grade difficulty is, this is probably, quote unquote, the easiest is in this central area. It's mm -hmm. still difficult, but it's easiest. Hairline is the most important thing. You've got to learn this. So this is, even though it's harder, it's critical you learn a good hairline. So my goal for your time here for the next few days is how to learn this. Okay, if you can get this down, you're going to transplant a lot of men very well. The, the, I would say the next level of difficulty uh, would probably be the crown, okay, in terms of design, because this is a, a harder, but it's, it's doable. I would say after you've gotten this mastered, I would go to start doing some crowns. This, the, the next, but then you take a leap that's way up here, and I, I would say this is probably one of the hardest things to do well, way up there, and the eyebrow is, only, is the hardest thing to do well. So people a lot of times say, you know, I'm going to start with eyebrows. That's like saying, I'm going to start with Einstein's theory of relativity and work back to F equals MA. You, it's very, you, you have to start with what's easy and go to hard. And just because it's, it's small, it's like a little eyebrow, I'm just going to do a few, it's very, very hard. So the, the one thing is, is, so I'm not even going to talk about the eyebrow today, so I've just introduced that as a concept. The other thing I want to talk about is transitions. So nature has never created a abrupt transition. When, one thing I'm, I noticed in lab, and the great thing is teaching more, I learn more learn how to teach better. And so when I've, one thing I've noticed, remember I told you that this whole frontal zone goes straight forward. Well, it doesn't go straight forward and all of a sudden become the temple, okay? It goes straight forward into the lateral centimeter or so, and then there's this gradual transition going down. So just in this zone, if you look in this area, see if we can hold that up a little bit. The hairs, do you see here this? I, I don't know if you can mm, see good. it. It goes like this. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right, so there's a gradual transition, but the transition doesn't start here. 
The mistake is people start the transition way over here. You start the transition here, you get that same problem that I initially alluded to, which is a splayed hairline that looks horrible, uncombable, and doesn't provide central density because all the angles are splayed away from where you want the most density, which is right here called the central forelock. So you want density pointing here. So it should go straight forward, if not even slightly converged inward. So this area is the area you want to treat. So if you heard me saying, oh, just transition everything, that's a mistake. It's only here at that lateral area, right before the hairline becomes the temple, that there's a just a centimeter or so transition going down. Okay? Think of this of this uh, central forelock as being generally the area between the mid pupillary lines. Yeah, that's good. So do you want to show them my show them my temple peak because okay. it's gone. Oh just as a Okay. So yeah. so he has and I don't like him because of it. I don't think <laughs> More hair than me. So he has no, really no male pattern hair loss. So I the, do. So if you look at my temple peak, which well, is pretty still, much gone. But you still have the wisp of the hair. Yeah. And this is still, this is still, unfortunately, Vance, you have too much hair. I apologize here. But the, the, the benefit still is you, that, the, the benefit is that the hair, you can still see, even with some of these finer vellus hairs that are starting to occur, or the vellus hairs are the, the hairs from thick terminal hairs on the way toward no hairs, but the, you can see that they still angle this way, okay? This temple point he still has a temple point, he's still angled back. Now, if you go up here, where do they angle? They angle down, okay? So look at the transition. I'm gonna slowly show you going this way. Do you down see? And, and posterior. And posterior, I'm sorry, yeah. that, that's what I meant. Posterior, posterior, slightly down, slightly down, slightly down. And then the transition here, same thing going over, 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 down, okay? The other thing that I, that I found um, when I started transplanting into the temple is that the, the upper temple, Right, like the frontal temple angle. Can you show them where that is, Sam? Oh, sorry. What is that? The, the upper, the upper temple. Yeah. So the first one to two centimeters from here up. That's not bad in terms of difficulty. That's the first that's place. That's point. I mean, this is is not too bad because yeah. you can hide that with styling. You move with every centimeter you move down, the level of difficulty increases exponentially. So just stay stay the heck out of the temple. You can go, what Vance is saying is, I, I didn't have it in the camera in view, about right here. Yeah. Once you start going down to here, it's danger. So just, just right yeah. here is safe. Uh, actually, this is good, Vance, because you have a different crown. It's actually easier to follow this crown. Uh, sorry, Scott. But, this, but you can see, this, this, he has a central one whirl. It goes down this way. Okay, and comes up here. So this is more of a classic uh, whirl. The one thing I want to show that the next point is that transition I told you about. There's no abrupt transition, so this is important. So as you see how these go forward, well, it continues forward. These are all forward. Okay, but now look at this part here. It starts to curl down this way. Well, let's turn 45 degrees this way. If you see here, no, 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 sorry, the other way, right here. So if you see this is starting to, where is this? Why is this? Why is this part going down? Because why is that? That's going to the lateral hump. Do you see how this crown naturally extends forward into the lateral hump? There's no transition where it goes, it goes slowly down this way. Let's look at this side. Well, this is part of his crown. It goes this way and it naturally transitions. You said, well, is it only for a clockwise world? No. Even, whatever world, we're gonna show back on Scott how it does the same thing. There's, it, it goes straight forward, because these go all straight forward, and then it goes clock, it goes, sorry, uh, goes down this way, so it transitions down. So that's the, the transition from crown to mid scalp is relatively straight, and the transition from crown to lateral hump goes down this way. So let's do Scott's, because he's got a, a different world, but I'm gonna show you it exists on every scalp. There are no abrupt, abrupt transitions when you design recipient sites. So when I watch you make recipient sites, I don't want to see da 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 sh Okay, it's going to da 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 in the right areas, like the crown, the, the front, the hairline's going to be da 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 straight across, okay? Except for that little lateral transition point in lateral center. So, as I said, this is a little bit different because we've got whirls going up, and this one's clockwise. This one is also clockwise. There's maybe a, a point of this that's not, maybe even counterclockwise going, no, this is still clockwise. But if you look, it, even though this goes down like this, where does it go? It goes this way and then down this way. Sorry, let me put my finger in. It goes this way and it goes down this way, right? There are, it doesn't go here and all of a sudden go like this. There, and then if you watch here, it goes, and this is one of the most whirly crowns, but it's still, look at this. This goes up here, right? And then where does it go? Down this way. Where does it go here? It goes up and then this way, okay? Uh, and then this one goes down this way 
and goes here, okay? And this one goes down this way. So there are no abrupt transitions. And now you can see, and remember that box concept, it really flows in a way that has a logic and, and, and a pattern. And I'm gonna have you guys recreate that in the lab. Any other comments, Vance? A really good place to study um, hair pattern, growth patterns in the crown is on the airplane. Yeah. No, seriously, because you can just sit and look at the back of people's heads and you're not gonna get arrested or anything. And the other thing is, what Sam is talking about is, is general guidelines of how hair grows, usually. And then you're gonna study each other's hair in the lab and you will see exceptions. Yeah, that's we'll see point. things where, whoa, 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 there's an abrupt transition. Sam said that wasn't supposed to happen. Well, of course, nature has, nature True. messes with everything. But what we're trying to do is, is give you a, an appreciation of how to look at hair and some things to start paying attention to, to teach yourself to be a good student of hair. Because once, you, once your eye can recognize what normal is, then you, then you can teach yourself to recreate that, knowing as you go along that there's always exceptions. But the, the weird and the wacky where you see that hairline that has a 90 degree change in hair direction in a very short distance of time, don't think, oh yeah, I can mimic that. If you try to do that, we're gonna screw it up. Mother Nature can do whatever she wants. Stick to the general patterns of what he's describing. The reason is it'll keep you out of trouble. And the one thing is, uh, not to make this more advanced, but the only reason I introduce is to, to, is to continue to highlight what Vance is talking about in terms of variability. Female-shaped female hairlines, I'll talk about this tomorrow, but again, that's an advanced topic because they're so complicated and very, very different, but it's part of education to understand this. The, the other reason to talk about uh, female hairlines is sometimes you, what I see in men, they have a female hairline. It's not that they have a sh shape like this, but their angles have a cowlick in the front. And, and sometimes I look down there and their angles are going straight back. Well, if they've got a pretty good amount of hair on the front, you can't just start chopping through the existing hairs and making whatever you, you heard in lab. You, you have to sit there and recreate what he's got, which is like, I, you know, I just did a female in particular and all her hair started all going backwards from the very front. That's not that uncommon. And so you don't just sit here making your own whimsical design. You've got to follow that or you're going to create this uncombable mess. So that's, that's a, a good example of really sit down and study the patient's existing hair. If they don't have anything left and they told you at birth they had this hair that grew this way, forget it. Recreate the hair that we talk about. But if they've got 90, 80% of what's there and you've got to rebuild what's on top of that, don't start making conflicting hair angles that, that exist. So anything else, Vance? Is that good? No, just good. I agree with that. When, when there's hair there, follow that hair meaning mimic the direction and angle of those hairs, and you can't go wrong. Good. Any questions uh, from the audience before we switch over to the next topic?